How's it going ladies and gentlemen? In this hands-on video, we're going to take a look at a hundred different iOS 12 features and changes. So before we begin, please go ahead and thumbs up and like this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because there's a lot more to come. Let's get started. First of all, Apple really talked about the performance differences between iOS 12 and previous versions of iOS. So I wanted to run a compute benchmark in Geekbench. You can see the score there, 15262 on iOS 11 on my iPhone 10. So you can see how it compares to the average, very close to the average iPhone 10 score. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the iPhone 10 running iOS 12. And you can see the metal score is a lot higher, 15723 significantly higher than the average iPhone 10 score. So performance has definitely increased with iOS 12. Now, of course, you get a brand new wallpaper with iOS 12. It is right here and it looks great, especially on that OLED display. So you can see that brand new wallpaper for iPhone and iPad. Now there are several new iOS 12 apps, including the brand new measure app, which uses AR kit to measure distances between multiple points. So here's what the measure app looks like, mainly dominated by the viewfinder. So all you have to do is move the point in the middle of the screen to the desired location. So we're gonna measure this keyboard. Once it's right there at the edge, just tap the plus button, drag it on over. And then once you reach the other edge, tap the plus button again, and there we go, I'm very impressed by the accuracy. And it's gonna ask you, sort of like the Compass app, to move your iPhone around uh, when you first launch it. Now I'm gonna measure this ruler, and that can definitely tell us how accurate the measure app is, and it's very accurate, as you can see there. And you can also add additional points for 3D measurements if you wish to do so. Thumbs up if you'd like to see a more in-depth walkthrough on this. Now in the bottom right-hand corner of the measure app, you'll notice a level tool and this is the same tool that used to be found in the Compass app, but that has been removed and migrated over. See that level tool in the Compass app here on iOS 11? That has been removed from the Compass and placed in the Measure app. Now here's a change I think a lot of you iPhone 10 users are gonna like. In iOS 11, if you wanted to kill apps, you couldn't just swipe up on an app card. You first had a tap and hold on that app card to enter delete mode and then you could swipe up or tap the red button in the upper left hand corner like this. But now in iOS 12, things work like they used to work. So when you invoke the app switcher, now you can just swipe up. You don't have to tap and hold at all. What do you guys think? Do you like that change or not? Now the voice memos app got a big new redesign for iOS 12. You can see the old icon there on iOS 11. Now you see the new icon here on iOS 12. So the icon looks better obviously, but it doesn't stop there. The entire app has been rebuilt from the ground up. A new interface as you can see there. Let's go ahead and test it out. This is a test. This is a test. So fairly simple, straightforward to the point tap the little ellipsis button, you can edit duplicate or share, and you can also swipe up on the record section to reveal the full interface. This is another test. This is another test. And best of all, your memos sync with iCloud. And that syncing comes in handy because there is now for the very first time a voice memos app for the iPad. And you can already see your memos there from the iPhone recordings because iCloud syncing is enabled. Very, very nice. Here's sort of a random thing that I noticed. There is now a date in the status bar for iPad. So in the upper left hand corner, right next to the clock, you're gonna see current day and date right there, but I'm still undecided as to whether I like this change. Now I have noticed better performance in iOS 12, which is on the left for things like launching the camera app shortcut, launching apps under load, etc. The quick type keyboard gets a UI makeover. Here is iOS 11. That's how the quick type keyboard looks, the predictive text above the keys. Now here is iOS 12. You can see the keyboard matches the bottom Chrome interface, looks better, looks cleaner. In the same way, the voice memos got a makeover. The stocks app also got a major new redesign. You can easily view stock quotes, interactive charts, top news. It integrates with Apple news. And of course it all syncs using iCloud. So let's go ahead and launch the stocks app here. You see your stock ticker interface at the top. Below, you're gonna see your Apple News content once that is populated. It takes a little while in first launch, and this is a beta, so you have to keep that in mind as well. You tap one of the stocks, you get more details. You also have your ticker here at the top, so you can 
keep tabs on other stocks you're following while you're looking at the main item of interest at the moment. So it looks like the Apple news data is now populated. Why this is so cool is because when you tap on a particular company like Tesla, for instance, you get all the related Apple news data from those Apple news sources below. And you can tap on that. You can swipe through the, the various stories and just kind of read up as to what's going on with that particular company, especially if you're noticing some major uh, movement with your stock, a lot of volume. Well, you can look at the news stories and maybe find out why using trusted Apple News sources. So I really like this redesign. I think it's a very great redesign. The Stocks app was neglected for so many years, but I think those of you who use the Stocks app are gonna be very happy with this update. But the stocks don't stop there. Yes, that means there is, for the very first time, a native iPad Stocks app with iOS 12, and it comes with, of course, that Apple News integration it's going to be very beneficial to anyone who likes to keep up with the latest ongoings. You can, of course, swipe through the various news stories related to the companies that you follow. And that extra large iPad canvas allows you to easily switch between the various companies that you follow and catch up on the latest news. With iOS 12, the iPad now gets iPhone 10 inspired gestures. So the first thing you're going to notice is that when you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, it goes back to the home screen, just like it does on the iPhone 10. Doing the same gesture on iOS 11 would have just opened up the dock. But to open the dock now, all you do is swipe up, hold for a second, and release, and that will invoke the dock. Now to open up the app switcher, you just swipe up, hold for a second, and that will invoke the app switcher like that. So let me show you again. Let's just open up the app store and swipe up, release like that to open up the app switcher. And switching in between apps works very much like it does on the iPhone. You just swipe up, swipe to the left or right to switch between apps. Of course, you can still use your gestures, your multi-touch gestures like your four finger and five finger swipe like that if you wish to do so as well. Now, one of the things that made it difficult to switch between the iPhone 10 and the iPad was the differences between invoking Control Center and Notification Center on the iPad versus iPhone 10. But now that's all been unified, swipe from the left, get Notification Center, swipe from the right, get Control Center. Not to be outdone by the voice memos and stocks app comes a brand new redesigned news app, which finds all of your news sources on the left side of the screen and all of your content on the right side of the screen makes it really easy to quickly peruse through all of your available sources. And then once you find an article that you wanna read, simply tap on it and open it up. I have to say the news app is probably one of my favorite default apps on iOS period. It's just so very well done. And if you switch over to portrait mode while on the iPad, you're gonna notice that you can read in full screen like this and tap on the source. And then you have that full article just like that. Now, I don't know about you, but I use iOS's built-in markup tool set all the time. And now in iOS 12, you get a new feature that allows you to select from a much wider palette of colors. So now it's no longer just six colors. You get a whole lot more colors to choose from, which is going to be very nice for those who use markup on a regular basis. True, it's a small change, but it's one that I really appreciate. And along with the updated color palette, there's now the ability to tap on one of the tools in use and change the opacity and thickness of the stroke. So you can do that all on the fly simply by tapping on the tool while it's already selected. You'll find a control center QR code shortcut within control center's preferences. So if you go into preferences, select control center and select custom controls. If you scroll down, you'll notice a scan QR code shortcut that appears within control center. So now all you need to do is invoke Control Center, tap on the scan QR code shortcut like this, and that will take you to the camera app. And this allows you now to, of course, scan QR codes, which iOS 11 could already do, but now QR codes are highlighted within frame, sort of like a face to make it easier to scan those codes. And once the code is scanned, simply tap on the notification banner to execute the action. Now here's something for all the Face ID users with an iPhone 10. You can now set up an alternate appearance. So basically a second face for Face ID. So if you have a, a costume that really changes up your appearance, you can use this to set up an alternate appearance or you can actually use it to set up a second person, which I have confirmed does work, even though the verbiage doesn't explicitly say that it should be used that way. 
iBooks in iOS 12 is no more. It is now called Apple Books, and it features a brand new coat of paint that makes it easier to discover new book content using recommendations based on your current reading habits. And of course, audiobooks are still a big part of the book experience. There's more flexible collections, which is going to make managing the content you already own much easier. And then of course, the reading experience itself is optimized for the type of the device that you're using, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad. And really Apple Books is all about removing friction from the reading experience, removing friction from the discovery experience and making it a one-stop shop for all of your reading needs. And to correlate with this Apple Books update, you're gonna find some new options in the books preferences. So if you go to settings, books, you'll find some new panels and switches like update other devices and reading now. Now I know I've said this several times thus far in this video, but I think you guys are going to like this feature here, the enhanced battery statistics that are found in iOS 12. Now here is what it looks like. You get a nice graph view, a nice visual view that you didn't get on iOS 11 and below. So you get the last 24 hours of usage and also the last seven days. I don't have the seven day data just yet, uh, but after some time, it will give you that data. And you can show usage time and battery usage just by tapping the heading right there. And here's something you'll really like if you're a battery hawk, persistent usage data after reboot. So normally on iOS, when you reboot your device, your usage data goes away, but that's no longer the case with iOS 12. So I am rebooting my iPhone 10. I'm gonna open up the preferences for the battery. And there you go, persistent data for your battery even after a reboot. Now here's something interesting. Hey, you know who now works with the low power mode. So you can see iOS 11 here, when I have low power mode enabled, hey, you know who is disabled. But now on iOS 12, if I go into Siri settings and I check, you can see, listen for hey, you know who is enabled even with low power mode on. Now here's something that low key might be my favorite iOS 12 feature, security code autofill. So when you get a security code sent to you via messages, look, you get an autofill from the quick type bar and you just tap on it like that to fill that in. That is super awesome. Thumbs up if you feel like me. There's new strong password verbiage that you'll find when you tap in a password field. It's gonna say, hey, iPhone created a strong password. It doesn't actually display the password, which is more secure. And then you have the option to use that strong password or create your own password. So I'm gonna tap use strong password. It fills it in automatically. And then you can find that password within the password section of the settings app. In iOS 11, the password section of the settings used to say app and website passwords, but in iOS 12, it now says passwords and accounts. When you tap on here, you'll find some additional new things. Number one, next to website and app passwords, you now get a numerical value for how many records are stored inside, and you'll find a new autofill password switch. You can now ask Siri for passwords. What's my Vimeo password? That's iOS 11. That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. What's my Vimeo password? And this is iOS 12. Opens right up, authenticates with Face ID to the requested password. iOS 12 now includes password reuse auditing. So it's smart enough to know if you've reused a password with another login and will tell you, you see that little exclamation point next to that? That tells you that the password is used across different websites and is therefore not safe. So if you tap change password on website, it takes you to the website to change it. In iOS 12, it looks like there will be eventually automatic system updates because there is now a switch for automatic updates under the software update section of preferences. iOS 12 now includes an English thesaurus that you can enable from the dictionary preferences. And once you do so, you simply tap on look up and now you'll see all the synonyms from the thesaurus next to any configured dictionaries that you have enabled. And speaking of dictionaries, there are now three additional new dictionaries in iOS 12. There's an Arabic English dictionary. There's also a Hindi English dictionary. And then lastly, there is a Hebrew dictionary. Sadly, I don't yet have a CarPlay enabled head unit to be able to test this out, but this is very exciting. iOS 12 includes support for third-party navigation apps. 
Do Not Disturb has received several key upgrades in iOS 12, including this right here, Do Not Disturb during bedtime. So calls and notifications will be silenced and notifications will also be sent to history so that if you have to pick up your phone, you're not inundated with a lot of notification causing your brain to spin up and then you start thinking about acting on those notifications. But when you turn it off, you can still view all of the notifications that have come in. And if you wish to, you can go in and adjust the settings for Do Not Disturb, including bedtime mode within the D&D preferences. Now, if you 3D touch the Do Not Disturb icon in Control Center, you'll find several new options in iOS 12. You can snooze for an hour until tomorrow morning or until you leave a particular location. And you can still access your schedule just by tapping the schedule button. That'll take you to the settings for Do Not Disturb and you can set that schedule up as well. Now here's something big that we've been wanting for forever. Grouped notifications are finally here in iOS 12. There is the group of notifications and you can act on all of those notifications in one fell swoop. All you need to do is swipe like that. Then you can manage view or clear all notifications in that group at once. So if I tap on view, I can view that full message thread. Now here's another handy notification centric feature, instant tuning for notifications. So if you swipe over, you can now select manage to instantly tune notifications for a particular app. So now I can choose to deliver those notifications quietly, turn off or go directly to settings. So what does it mean to deliver notifications quietly? Well, basically what this means is that notifications while still appearing in notification center will not present any sounds, banner notifications or lock screen notifications. And Notification Center just in general has received a slight UI update. You'll notice here, this is iOS 11's Notification Center. See where it says earlier today, and then you have the X to clear notifications. Notice how small that X is. Now we're gonna swap over to iOS 12 and check out the differences. So now you'll see where it explicitly states Notification Center, and also the X is larger as well for clearing out your notifications. And you'll also notice a new UI for the preferences for your notifications. So you see the alerts has a brand new UI to choose between the types of notification alerts like lock screen, notification center, and banners. There's also notification grouping, which is a new feature, of course, for iOS 12. And now you can group automatically by app or turn off grouping altogether for a particular application. Now you can easily spot those differences when you go back and look at the iOS 11 preferences. Speaking of preferences, the sound and haptics preference panel has been relocated in iOS 12. Here it is on iOS 11, right below wallpaper. Now let's look at iOS 12 and now it's below notifications. I think it makes a lot more sense where it is in iOS 12. You'll also notice that the control center preference panel has been relocated as well. In iOS 11, it was sandwiched between notifications and do not disturb, but on iOS 12, the control center preferences rest right below general. And while we're on the subject of preferences, you'll now find a preference panel for the updated Stocks app. And there's also preferences for the Voice Memos app as well. You can find that right below Reminders. Now the Voice Memos preferences features three separate panels to manage your memo settings. So you can permanently delete Voice Memos, change audio compression quality, and choose a default recording name. So you see 30 days set to delete, using AAC compression and recording location is used for the name when location services are available. And no shock here, the brand new measure app features a preference panel, which is found below compass. In iOS 11, you'll notice an icon next to system services under the privacy preferences. Now this icon is not displayed in iOS 12's preferences, but that could be a bug. This is probably one of my favorite iOS 12 features and it's been a long time coming. You will now find favicons in your tabs in Safari. You can enable this directly from Safari preferences, show icons and tabs. So when I enable that, notice what you see there in each tab, the little nine to five Mac favicon. All I can say is finally. The podcast app gains custom skip settings in iOS 12. Here's iOS 11, you get 15 seconds skip back and 15 seconds skip forward. But if we switch over to iOS 12, you'll notice 15 seconds skip back and 30 seconds skip forward. And the reason why that is, is because you can go into the preferences for the podcast app and customize both skip buttons. So if I scroll down here under skip buttons, you will see forward and back. I can go into each of those and choose between 10, 15, 30, 45, and 60 seconds for both buttons. I'm gonna do so here on back. And now when I go back to the app, you're gonna notice that my custom settings have been applied 
and now I can quickly skip forward and backwards 30 seconds just like that. But it doesn't stop there. Apple also gives users a remote control skip option so that you can use your inline remote control to skip forwards and backwards instead of the default next and previous. Now it's no surprise, one of the big iOS 12 features is the presence of four new Animoji, including a T-Rex and a Koala. And I don't think there's any debating whatsoever which new Animoji is the best. It is hands down the Koala. And if you don't agree, then I'm, I'm sorry to say you're just wrong. Now, one of the other notable upgrades for Animoji in iOS 12 is the ability for it to detect when you're sticking out your tongue. Yes, they call it tongue detection. And as you can see, it does work as promised. But it doesn't stop there. There's also better wink detection. You could previously sort of like pull off a wink with Animoji, but now I think it's a lot better in iOS 12. The winks are much more convincing. But the big new Animoji related feature for iOS 12 is not the four new Animoji, but it's the ability to create a Memoji, make your own Animoji and make it look like you. Now this is possible thanks to the Memoji Maker tool, which you'll find within the Messages app. So this tool allows you to do all sorts of things. You can customize skin tone, eyes, nose, lips, eyewear, headwear, <laughs> lots of different features you can customize and have your own custom design and emoji. And with iOS 12, you can really go crazy with creativity because now you get 30 seconds to record your Animoji. Now the Messages app gets a significant upgrade all the way around. First of all, there's the new camera interface. So now when you tap the camera, it goes directly to the full screen camera. There's no more little window that you have to deal with. It takes you directly to the full screen camera and that gives you access to your full camera app. You can go in, of course, and edit as well. And you can also go in and mark up your photos that you take before sending them. But suppose you wanna send a photo that you already took earlier. Well, just use the iMessage Photos app, which is right here. And this will actually suggest to you photos to share based on who you're talking to. You can access recent photos and of course, access all photos. Now let's briefly talk about the camera effects that we alluded to earlier. If we tap the effects button in the bottom left-hand corner, you get access to messages app and emoji. So if you tap in emoji here, you can actually give yourself an, an emoji head that will sit on top of your body, which is very weird, but nonetheless hilarious. And there's also messages app filters. So you can go in and use filters there. These are sort of like some of the clips filters from the clips app that we've seen in the past. You can scroll through all those. You can also swipe up to view all of your filters at once. There's message app text effects. So you can go in, update text, very Snapchat-like, very Clips app-like. If you've ever used the Clips app, you'll know what to expect here. And that tracks your movement as well. And then there's also shapes that you can add that also track your movement. So you can just tap to add shapes. And as I move around, those will follow me. So needless to say, this is a pretty spectacular update to the Messages app. And I think a lot of people are gonna have tons of fun with this. You'll also find a redesigned app strip for iMessages which actually shares the same space with the quick type bar. So when you start typing, you see the quick type options come up, but then when you tap the messages button, it disappears and is replaced with all of your apps for easy access. You also notice a new context shortcut at the top of the messages app when you're starting a conversation. So if you tap that, now you get audio, FaceTime and info buttons, and you can easily tap either of them to execute specific actions. A new for you and search tab replaces the sharing and memories tabs in the iOS 12 photos app. And you'll find a handy list of new media types at the bottom of the albums tab for quickly locating specific content. Search is a much more prominent feature in the updated photos app. You have places, categories, groups, you'll get suggestions, specific location searches have been enhanced and it's just overall more robust. Now shared activity hasn't been done away with. You'll now find it under the For You tab along with your memories. Now here's something that is really cool for those of you who use the camera connection kit to import photos from a standalone camera. Now you get a redesigned interface that's much more practical, just tells you more information. You can see how many items there are, the size. You can even make the photos and videos import to a particular album if you don't want them just in your general library. So that is a very, very welcome feature. And there's also a status indicator that tells you the status of your import. It doesn't work perfectly just yet, but it is a very promising looking feature for those of you who regularly import photos and videos from a camera or SD card. iOS 12 features Find My iPhone Intents for Siri. Find my iMac. Which one are you looking for? 
playing a sound on your iPhone. Now the standalone shortcuts app isn't yet available in iOS 12, but you can still go into the settings and go into Siri preferences and add a suggested custom shortcut to Siri. So I'm gonna show you how to do so right now. I'm gonna tap on more shortcuts here and see what it's suggesting for me. Oh, it's suggesting that I go to 9to5Mac so I can use that one to navigate to 9to5Mac with my voice. So I just tap on there and now I add to Siri by issuing it a custom command. So just tap the record button to record the keyword. Go to 9to5Mac. Okay, so now that it's recorded, I can test it out with Siri. So let's test it right now. Go to 9to5Mac. All right, so it opens up Safari, takes me directly to the web page, and we're done. That is super handy. Screen Time is a new tool in iOS 12 that allows you to monitor your iPhone's usage. So this allows you to see what apps you've used, how long you've used them, how many times you've picked your iPhone up, things of that nature. And you can see all these data points here. You can see the most used apps right here. You can see how many times I picked up my iPhone right here. And there's not very many data points here because we're concentrated just on this one day. But if I tap the last seven days, you could see a lot more data points. You see a lot more apps that I've used, a lot more pickups that I have here, and a lot more time on particular apps as well. Screen time is a great way to get insight into your iPhone's usage. But it's also a great way to pull in the rain, so to speak, when it comes to overusage. Say you find yourself being addicted to your smartphone. Now you can establish particular downtime periods. Uh, so when you set those periods up, you're going to get a notification when you try to launch an app. It's going to say time limit. You've reached your limit on whatever that app may be. Now, of course, you can ignore these limits and say, remind me in 15 minutes or ignore the limit for the entire day if you choose to do so. There's also app limits within screen time, which allows you to set daily limits for particular app categories. So I could say, hey, I wanna limit my usage of productivity apps and education apps throughout the day. I don't wanna go overboard. I can add those two, and then I can set particular time limits. And you can set those limits across the board, or if you really wanna get granular, you can go in and customize individual days and set time limits per day. There's also an always allow section, which allows you to whitelist particular apps. The phone app's always whitelisted so that people can call out in case of an emergency, but you can go in and choose other apps to whitelist if you choose to do so. In previous versions of iOS, you used to be able to find restrictions in the general section of the settings, but that is no longer found, at least initially, in iOS 12 because restrictions have been migrated over to screen time, which you know makes sense considering everything else involved with it. So once you enable the content and privacy restrictions, you'll then find it again in the general section of the settings app. And it's no surprise that Apple has designed the screen time app with family sharing in mind so that parents can exercise a measure of control over their device usage. So you can set up downtime periods if you wish to do that as a parent. You can establish app limits, which will require your permission to go beyond the app limit. And then there's also content and privacy restrictions that you can set up for inappropriate content. FaceTime has received a massive update in iOS 12. Unfortunately, I'm unable to test all the features just yet, but we will have further walkthroughs in the future. They do have effects built into FaceTime. So just like the Messages app, now you can apply filters, you can apply an emoji, you can apply text effects and shapes directly in FaceTime and everyone can see you. Now, another long awaited feature that is finally here is group FaceTime. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this for you right now, but you can see you can add additional people to an ongoing conversation up to 32 in all, which is amazing. So 32 people on a FaceTime call is possible in iOS 12. You see the little icons which represent the faces of each individual if the call was actually working. It isn't, but I can already tell you this is going to be amazing. And then you can also start or jump into group FaceTime calls directly from a group iMessage conversation. So you just tap on the name, tap FaceTime, and that will allow you to easily initiate a FaceTime group conversation directly from the Messages app. Now here's something that's actually pretty neat. If you know the lyrics to a particular song but don't know the name of the song, you can actually type in the lyrics and find the song based on lyrics. It will actually search the lyrics of the song and pull that up just like that. So 
Let's look at the lyrics and see if they match my search. And yeah, the very first line, draw a line in the sand, is there. Here's another random but totally also new iOS 12 feature. You can now rescan failed Face ID attempts. Normally you get the passcode and you have to put your passcode in, but now you just swipe up to rescan at any time just like that. That is cool. With iOS 12, even if you don't have a 3D touch enabled device, you can now invoke the trackpad mode simply by tapping and holding on the space bar. So let me show you how this works on my iPad. So you see the two finger swipe of course works, but now if I tap and hold on the space bar, that invokes trackpad mode as well. So this is handy if you're using a device without 3D touch, you will still be able to invoke the trackpad mode iOS 12 now includes a dark, now plain lock screen interface. So here's iOS 11, here's how it looks with the light lock screen interface, but here is iOS 12, and that looks really, really fresh. What do you guys think? Siri can now control the flashlight in iOS 12. Turn on flashlight. Okay, I turned on flashlight. Turn off flashlight. Okay, I turned off flashlight. The standalone shortcuts app for Siri isn't out just yet, but you can use workflow scripts with Siri shortcuts. Let me show you how Siri's preferences will automatically detect workflows. So you can simply add those to Siri, give it a name, convert an emoji, and then call on that once you fulfill the necessary requirements. So I'm gonna copy this an emoji and now just execute the shortcut using Siri. So let's give it a shot. Convert an emoji. So now that will automatically run the workflow to convert an emoji, take it from the clipboard, and there you go, a new GIF with a hard G. Email previews in iOS 11 are useful, but not exactly what I would label as very verbose. In fact, it cuts off a lot of the email. You don't really get much of the email without opening it up in full. But with iOS 12, you get a lot more information in your email notification previews. In fact, you can even scroll. In iOS 11, you could use third-party keyboards like Gboard, but you couldn't use Dictation along with that third-party keyboard. Well, no more. In iOS 12, you can now use Dictation along with third-party keyboards, just like this. Dictation works with third-party keyboards. Simple. The artist page in Apple Music has received an update. You get a nicer looking photo with the name of the artist or band, and you also get a new play button, which will play back songs in shuffle mode iOS 12 has some awesome new spotlight suggestions, such as the ability to suggest opening a link from Pasteboard. So if you have a URL in your Pasteboard, simply tap that and it opens the website. Reachability has a couple of changes for iOS 12. Now when invoking, you'll see a little up button, tap that, it will just go back to normal mode. But also you can scroll reachability simply by scrolling your finger like that, which is handy for easily viewing content. There's an interesting new control center hearing shortcut that allows you to use your AirPods as sort of a hearing assistant device from what I can gather from the description. So when you enable hearing in the control center preferences, you can find the hearing shortcut within control center. Just tap on that and now you see Jeff's AirPods and live listen. So presumably this will assist with hearing your surroundings. There's a very subtle new control center brightness animation. So here's iOS 11. Notice the brightness, little animation, the little sun. Now notice it on iOS 12, the little sun is actually just dots instead of rays when you get so low. Now here's another new feature in Apple Music, featured radio stations. If you tap the radio tab, normally on iOS 11, this is what you saw recently played right beneath Beats 1 and radio stations. But if we switch over to iOS 12, you're gonna see something a little bit different there. Now you see featured stations. So for me, I have CBS News, Bloomberg, and NPR. In the iOS 11 home app, there was a weird like sort of compass button for the home settings. But now in iOS 12, that's been replaced with a home button for the home settings. Makes a lot more sense. Now here's something that's really welcome for anyone who uses locks or temperature sensors or things like that. Now you get a dedicated section for notifications for locks and sensors. So you don't have to go into each individual item and change its parameters. Now you can access all of those in one handy location. Now here's the weather app with iOS 11. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll see their visibility UV index. Now let's look at the iOS 12 version. And now at the very bottom, you will see, yes, air quality index and air quality. 
And here's something I forgot to mention with all the screen time focus earlier. Now you can enable a screen time widget to go along with the new screen time preferences here. So once you set up screen time, you can enable that widget. And now you have quick glanceable access to some of your high level device usage statistics. And if you wanna to go to the full screen time section of the preferences, you simply tap on the widget. And just sort of to reiterate how much smarter Spotlight is in iOS 12, now it will actually suggest that you play certain songs even uh, right there from within the Spotlight series suggestions. So you can tap on that, tap play, and play that back. And lastly, there is an upgraded screen recording interface for the iPad. Here's how it used to look on iOS 11. But now here it is on iOS 12, very much iPhone 10 inspired. You see the little uh, recording button in the upper right hand corner, very subtle, not as intrusive. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a hands-on look at 100 different iOS 12 features. Which one is your favorite feature? If you appreciated this video, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.